Music is the language that can speak to the gods. It's the only bridge that you have in language that can speak to any planet in the sky. You will have to face that fact. But what can you do? It's almost too late. WXPN, Philadelphia, Alternative Radio in the Delaware Valley. We have as uh, another special guest tonight in the studio, Sun Ra. And Spencer Weston, also Ken Shaw in the background there. Spencer Weston and uh, Ken Shaw are the people who put on the Jazz Live series at the Afro-American Historical and Cultural Museum. And Sun Ra is the person who will be performing at the Jazz Live series at the Afro-American Museum next, this Friday, June 1st. Um, I guess there are two shows, Spencer? Yes, one at 8 and the other at 10 o'clock, as okay. usual. All right. The Afro-American Museum is at 7th and Arch Streets, and for more information, you can call 574-0380. Sun Ra has been up in our studio before as a guest, and I'd like to welcome him back at this point. So welcome back, Sun Ra. Glad to see you again. Thank you. Um, I understand that you have returned again from another tour. The last time you were here, you were back from a tour, too. So I wanted to ask you where you've been, and uh, if you can tell us any highlights of the tour that you just completed. Well, it was a seven-month tour, really. We stayed in Egypt, Cairo, Egypt, and playing there two and a half months. Then we went and we played in Athens, Greece, for the American Embassy. Then we um, we kept on up to Geneva, uh, Switzerland. Then we went to Stockholm, Sweden. We went to Helsinki, uh, Finland. In fact, we played in three places in, in Finland. And uh, then we went to Munich. We went to the place where Hitler was born. I think it's Linz. Uh, we um, were Frankfurt. We went to uh, Valencia. We played three places in Spain. Valencia, Spain, Madrid, and another place I can't remember the name of. I had never heard of before. Then we played uh, Holland. We had Amsterdam, Rotterdam. Uh, we played Denmark, several places in Denmark. We played in um, somewhere in Italy, and then we played in uh, France. So seven months. That means you've been gone since about the fall sometime, I guess. That's right, around about October, November. Um, can you tell us any highlights, any things that stand out over those seven months in particular? Any? Well, we played in Egypt. Uh, we played there every other night at a club called uh, El Buco Club. It was the only jazz club there, really. But that's the uh, third time we've been there playing at that club. Um, when we uh, so we stayed in Egypt so long, the American Embassy um, <clears throat> wanted us to play in Greece, and we went there. And three weeks before we got there, all the tickets were sold out. It was surprising to the American Embassy. Uh, other places we went, uh, well, in in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, an officer from one of the American ships came to the concert and it was so crowded they say they couldn't even let one more person in but he forced his way in and he he heard us play then he wanted us to come on the ship which is a America's like they call it Star Wars ship it a uh, very unusual ship so he invited the band to come down I have pictures where I'm on now with the uh, Admiral and the different officers he showed us the ship uh, from 11 o'clock on, the public could come on at 1 o'clock, so they were wondering what we were doing on there. There were thousands of people standing in line, and we saw the ship. 
we enjoyed ourselves. It was very. It was named the USS Kidd. They said the person that named it after was a descendant of Captain Kidd. I think he got killed at Pearl Harbor. So you've been to Europe and Egypt before lots of times, right? Oh, yeah, I'm getting ready to go back. Um, in June, we're going to uh, London. Then we're going back to Germany. Did you record many of the concerts? I know you do that sometimes. Yes, I, I did quite a bit of recording in Egypt and uh, the other tours, too, because I always want to know how the band sound and uh, which direction I'm moving in. And I'm doing so many things, uh, creative arrangements, till uh, I have to hear them back because I have a lot of contrapuntal things going in there and also counter rhythms, counter harmonies, uh, counter melodies. And all these, all, all these three of those things are going on. It's a totally new approach to music, like a sort of shift uh, in, the, in the harmonies and sort of diagonal approach. The whole thing took some years to, uh, to develop the way I want to because uh, the right kind of music can change things on this planet. Uh, a lot of people trying philosophy and religious, religious approach. All kind of things have been tried, but nothing can move unless the music moves too, because if people move on one level and the music is the same, it's impossible for them uh, to escape from the humdrum sameness. The music tells the tale. Uh, like you judge a tree by its fruit, you judge a planet by the music, and music has to be on this planet the kind that other people on other planets would like, because we head it that way, you know. You can't just have music just for the Earth people. You've got to present the culture of planet Earth to the universe. And if it's just speaking of Earth things, then it's not suitable to reach other planets. The same way like different countries can reach other countries through that cultural approach and the music, uh, the Earth people now have to think about reaching other planets uh, to make a good impression. Uh, there are some more forces out there. And they say music soothes the savage beast. No doubt it could soothe hostile forces too if the people play some kind of music that uh, is required in this day and age, see? People, uh, well, they have to think about things like God and Lucifer, Satan and the devil. They got to think about beings other than human beings now, and angels, you know, remarkable universe. And they got to think about uh, a much, much neglected book, the Bible, which got God saying, I hate your music. But you know, I never heard a minister say anything about that. But the book said God hates, God hates the music. And I believe it too, some of the music they're playing. I hate it too. <laughs> not that it's uh, not good music. It just... Uh, it can't move, you know. And this planet is standing still, headed toward uh, sort of like this astral doom because it's been fixed up, you know, uh, unless something different happens in our ideas. Then it can move in another direction. And that's uh, possibly my mission on planet Earth, although personally <clears throat> I, I don't want to have anything to do with it because I didn't make it like this. But, uh, well... I started to stay in Egypt. I was having such a nice time in the sunshine. America was freezing. Every time I looked at the TV, I shut it, you know. <laughs> That's one thing they show in every country. They show what's happening in America. A lot of people might hate America, but in every country in the world, if you go there, you'll see what's happening, even the weather. So that's what I was doing there. In the daytime, at night I'd be playing. I'd go around the Sphinx and the Pyramid. And I learned... Um, Quite a few things there on the psychic plane. I even saw the place where Moses was in uh, the Nile River, which they, the Egyptians don't advertise. But uh, I saw that too. What you were saying about music reminds me of something that you said here years and years ago, which is that uh, music is the language that speaks to the gods. I assume that you still believe that. Of course. It's, uh, it's the language of the gods. And so... You can speak to the gods quicker through music than you can through words. Because, you see, music is really the only pure language you have. Uh, it's the kind of language that people can understand. In other words, you can make a mistake in grammar or something like that, and you can get by, in a sense, the average person. But if you make one wrong note in music, 
anywhere on this planet, people know it. Even though they may not have heard the song, they know when the rhythm is not right, they know when the melody is not right, they know when the harmony is not right. So the music has to be pure. Uh, the fact in America, it reached a point of distortion to, it's affecting the teenagers to kill their parents and do all kinds of things, mad things. But it's the music that's doing it, you see. I got a letter from, I wish I had it with me, to read from an a English teenager. And he was saying when we, were in, we played in England the last time that the music was warm, was kind, it had friendship in it, love in it. It was back in the past when people were more human, uh, when they, they were a different kind of feeling. And he was very, very glad to hear that kind of music. So I think uh, from that letter, I can see that teenagers really want something better than what they're getting. They don't want the harsh music anymore, but uh, adults think they do. <clears throat> they don't give them a chance to hear anything else, you know, but they should. And I'm sure they would make up their, they would choose something nice and soothing for their nerves. I want to ask you something about what you're going to play at the Afro-American Museum on Friday, but before that I thought we'd listen to um, some other recorded selection. I have queued up um, Dreams Come True. Do you want to say a little bit about that particular thing before we listen to it? Well, I wrote this song in, in Chicago. I and another person, a friend of mine, and... Uh, I really feel that dreams do come true. If you're sincere, they do come true. Okay, so this is Sun Ra and the orchestra and Dreams Come True. And we'll be back live with Sun Ra, talking to him about what he's going to play at the Afro-American Museum this Friday, June 1st. Dreams come true, I know they do. If you believe in love, mine came true. By the stars above, dreams come true. They just have to, true as the moon above. Mine came true, and yours will too. If you believe in love, dream of romance, strolling down lovers lane in a trance and dreaming over again. Dreams come true. They just have to, to prove they're so supreme. Mine came true. Have to do his dream.
Sun Ra and the orchestra there, and dreams come true. We're live in the studio here with Sun Ra and Spencer Weston, Spencer Weston of the Afro-American Historical and Cultural Museum at 7th and Arch Street, where Sun Ra will be performing two shows this Friday, June 1st, at 8 and 10 p.m. And again, for more information, call the Afro-American Museum at 574-0380. Sun Ra, um, before we talk a little about the music you're going to play on Friday, I want to to ask you a little bit about Dreams Come True there. Do you remember who the soloists were and everything? I don't know how long ago you recorded that, but who was playing the saxophone and the trumpet we heard there? That was John. Uh-huh. John Gilmore. Yes. Who's been with the band for trumpet years and years. Uh, Art Hall. Uh-huh. He's still in Chicago playing the studio band. Uh-huh. The drummer was Robert Barry, and another drummer that had never been out of Chicago, William Cochran, the bass, um, Victor Sprose, uh-huh. and Pat Patch was on there, Marshall. So. And was that you singing? No, that was a, a <laughs> friend of mine, uh, Clyde Williams. Okay. I wasn't sure. It kind of sounded like you, but it kind of didn't, you know? Well, I taught him, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I taught a lot of singers. Uh, in fact, I got one record out that uh, well, it re- was released in London. I mean, it might be on the other side of that, uh, A Foggy Day. They just said it wasn't long enough. <laughs> Cause it should, uh, you haven't heard that record, have you? A uh, Foggy Day? I, I don't remember it offhand. Well, I know the song. It, yeah, well, we got a record out. Is that on the other side of the I, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've heard well, that record. Well, anyway, it's very nice. You see, in Chicago, I was teaching about uh, four quartets at the same time. Uh, some of the things they uh, were doing there and doing there, they got it from me, you know, from uh, these quartets. Each one of them had a different style. And uh, it's very interesting, you know, what they sing. And in this particular quartet, I taught them to sing like a band. And they were doing things like uh, Holiday for Strings and Lullaby, Birdland, things like that. A totally different style. Hmm. And they, they were very sincere. They all loved music. It was too bad that they never came out of Chicago. Uh, but I'm going to release some of the things that, so the world can hear what I've been doing. Because I've been doing a lot of things, but I just felt um, I played a low profile, you know. The only reason I'm coming out of hiding now is because it looked like the, the planet is falling apart. So I think it might be falling apart because a lot of people who had quite a bit to offer the planet and who felt that, uh, well, they weren't going to be recognized. They didn't contribute, you know. And uh, in fact, it is true that everyone who had something different to offer had, has had a hard time in all countries in the world. Uh, well, I don't think it's happening in Europe now because they're really trying to get something different. But then really the truth is, the only thing that's different is jazz. Uh, America, unfortunately, uh, a lot a lot of master musicians to starve to death or going to other fields and they didn't realize the worth, I suppose, of, of this uh, spontaneous culture. Very important. I would say, as far as I'm concerned, the only gift God ever gave to the world is jazz. Oh, some people might think other things. Are, it's creativity at its utmost, and I, I would say that is an indication that a creator is involved when musicians can stand up and create. I mean, the master jazz musician could do that. Now, a lot of people could play jazz, but they couldn't create. But America had the creators. And in Europe, they were asking me about that. And I said, well, it, it just happened that in the black race in America, some masters were sent to them. And that's when they had to jazz because of the masters. Not because they were. I would say more talented than other nations, but they had masters, and these masters have never been, really been given credit because they stayed in the background, they, they, the low profile, but they unselfishly contributed money and acted like godfathers over musicians in the early days. I saw them do it, and uh, they never been mentioned in any jazz books because they didn't know about them, you know. But I did. As a teenager, I was uh, rehearsing late at night. Uh, with some of my schoolmates and this godfather, I don't know what his name was, he's a barber. And he'd be showing them principles of jazz. And uh, that happened in a lot of other states too in America. But no one has ever mentioned them. 
Well, certainly when the uh, list of masters of jazz is compiled anywhere, Sun Ra is one of the names that's going to be on it, you know. Almost, almost uh, without exception, I think. Sun Ra certainly is going to be on a list like that. Well, you know, I got a Jazz Master's Fellowship from uh, uh, the Performing Arts in Washington, but it seemed like the, the news, news uh, media didn't cover it. But it was the first time uh, Roy Elders got one, and Theo Lonis Monk was supposed to get one, the three of us, but he left the planet, and they, they said, well, the, the awards were given, fellowships were given to those who could create, and he couldn't create anymore, so they gave it to Dizzy Gillespie. And it really should have gotten wide uh, coverage because it was the first time America ever gave, as far as I know, fellowships to jazz musicians. Uh, it was a, well, it was an event. In the advertising, advertising for the concert on Friday at the Afro-American Museum, um, underneath where it says Sun Ra and the orchestra, it says, playing the dark side of jazz. That's right. I want to make a distinction between uh, black, in a sense, because a lot of black people are not doing things that's spiritual, and I'm a spiritual being, so I have to let the world know what they're doing is bad and uncultural. It's not me, because I can't afford to take the burden of a people that's supposed to be spiritual and worshiping God, and they're doing these materialistic things. So therefore, I bring it out in the open by saying the dark side of jazz to make a distinction between my music and black music, which is wonderful, but not spiritual enough for me. And so I have to make this distinction. So I said, I'm a dark spirit, you know. Uh, I don't even want to be called a man because uh, they're doing too many brutal things to one another. I prefer to be called an angel because that's what I am. And I'm going to act like an angel and do nice, beautiful, cultural things and stay away from man, M-A-N, because it's too <laughs> horrible, you know? It shouldn't be like that. But then the Bible says man's like the beast that perishes, and I, unfortunately, it's telling the truth because they're acting even worse than beasts. Uh, I don't need that kind of uh, what you call life. I don't need it, and it shouldn't exist among men. And they have to be careful now because... Uh, Something's watching very carefully and letting them think they're free, but they're not free. They're going to have to pay for being uh, indiscreet and being the way they are, and it's knocking on the door. I know that the last time you were at the Afro-American Museum, um, it was quite a wonderful show, and people really enjoyed it. The place was packed, and everybody had a great time. I was wondering if you have um, anything in particular that you're going to try to get over musically this time around, since you've been away and all. You well, know. I'm covering a lot of things. In fact, I got John singing, and in Egypt they were delighted to hear John sing uh, East of the Sun, and the Egyptian would hold up uh, a piece of cardboard with it written in big letters, East of the Sun, West of the Moon, and we had to play it several times during the night. They liked the way he sang it. And uh, then we uh, in Germany and other places, we was doing Mac the Knife. Although in Helsinki, they said we did uh, when the Saints come marching in, but I reckon it had the same flavor. Uh -huh. They had the newspaper, right? So we did that. But we really, we did something like the New Orleans style. We covered all planes of music, um, American, because like American Embassy, someone that represented American Embassy told us that America has a very bad image abroad, and they figured that maybe the music might uh, do make it make it be better and they write too but uh, they they've been sending some music that's mostly uh not creative and good musicians and all that but what the world new, needs is uh, a new idea something fresh something full of happiness and when i first started my band off that's what i said i was talking about happiness and i was talking about pioneering in outer space and i'm still talking about it and uh, because that's it, space is the place. One of the things that um, you and the orchestra always do, I think, is surprise people one way or another. I was wondering if you want to hint at any surprises you might have in store for Friday night. Well, for the first time, you know, well, mostly I play in New York more than I do anywhere else. And uh, the first time, I'm going to play 
the full force of what uh, I did in New York. Like I told the Egyptians, well, uh, we're well, used to the status quo and all that, and I suppose it's supposed to be too far out what I'm playing because you got a sort of ban on music here. But I played it everywhere else, and I'm going to play it here. I'm going to play what you need instead of what you might want. So they cheered at that. And I played my furthest out thing, which was uh, Shadow World, and they were delighted at it. Uh, however, now in France, we were going to be on a TV show, and we were rehearsing Shadow World, and the producer's show said to play it again on Council Show. <laughs> it was too much fun. Shadow World was the advent going on. So then I got so mad that I did Nuclear War, which is banned in America. You can't play it here on this stage. But the point of it's been played in Greece on there, and uh, it was played in Hartford, Connecticut. The fellow told me he slipped and played it one night about 3 o'clock. And I said, any reaction? He said, not, not anything adverse, you know. And uh, so now... The song uh, Nuclear Wall, they they put it on the air. They wouldn't put the Shadow World ever, but they put Nuclear Wall on there, and it's been on about three or four times, you know? That, is that the thing you played at the Afro American Museum last time? I think so. I think so, too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's pretty hard to forget that one, I think. Right. <laughs> um, I have queued up, it's spring, so yeah. maybe you can tell us a little bit about that before we listen to that. Well, I. Yes, um, I was inspired in, in Egypt to write that because the sun is always shining. And then also in Finland, Finland is a remarkable place. It's sort of like diagonal to the world. The sun shines another way there. But it does, it did give me a strange time feeling and Helsinki and, uh, of course, Rome. In all these different countries, I could feel something. And... Uh, Whenever we play it in any country, they they feel what we're doing. They feel the song. Now, they might not know the words. But I'm, I'm dealing with feeling the people. And this time, this last tour, it was standing ovations for every, everywhere we went. So I was trying to create what the uh, world music, you might say. And uh, that is what the Russians say would do the trick. World music. They're not worried about bums and things. They were trying to get the world music. Well, this time I was singing uh, that this is world music, jazz. Music is the language that can speak to the gods. It's the only bridge that you have in language that can speak to any planet in the sky. You will have to face that fact. But what can you do? It's almost too late. W X P N Philadelphia Alternative Radio in the Delaware Valley. I found out certain people born on the same signs. Well, they, they're just not dependable for this band. So I've gotten so that certain signs, there's no need of me getting them in the band because they're not going to stay, you know. It takes a person very creative, imaginative, and who can, who has some discipline to stay in this band. Now, I'm talking about discipline even more because the world is going as far as it can go with freedom, and it's on the fringes of chaos. <laughs> and they have to tighten up on the discipline now. It's such a big universe, you know, and omniverse, and people need each other now. And they realize how small they are. Like, those smaller than grains of sand when you take the whole omniverse. And, and they would uh, they would know they need each other, and they would talk more of interdependence than independence. I think 
more and more America is going to be talking about interdependence because there are four billion people on this planet. And America is just a very small place, too. So really, it's time for all Americans to get themselves together before it's too late. Another thing that you do is uh, write and publish your own poetry. Did you happen to bring any uh, poetry with you tonight? I think I did. <laughs> would, would you want to do uh, one poem before you leave? Do you have it with you? I think so. Yes. Uh, okay. I've been sort of uh, playing a low profile on my poetry because uh, it's dealing with something that uh, is the ultimate in things. And, and uh, I have found out that people on this planet Men on this planet are very immature in mentally and spiritually, and I didn't know that. But from dealing with them in, in the band at different places, I found out that uh, they're actually walking around here dead. <laughs> but this is a poem that they call it The Dual Change, and I was surprised I went to Detroit and two musicians um, recited it to me together <laughs> and, and by heart you know and it really was very impressive and this is called the dual change things change there's always change in the air but the change is different now from any ever felt before the music is listening and waiting while sounding sounds of terrible silence didn't you hear the silence lately music is silence too they cannot stop the silence they cannot compel the silence to cease they do not know yet how loud the silence can become. There's always change in the air, but there's a different spirit in the wind, a bold and daring soul from somewhere there, somewhere out in yon. It is even beyond the time. Time is never no more. Everything is space. It is the space of the dual change. The street is no longer a street. It is the highway of the world. There's change in the air. Do you not hear the heavy silence there? It's a double space of dual change. The spirit wind is in the air. It hovers above the street, no longer there. The street, a highway, wide and fair. The emergency decreed it thus. All at once it was seen. The road, the people, the wrong direction there. It's the right road. They're going the wrong direction there. Some of them must turn and go the other way. The arrow points to pointlessness. Pointlessness, a two-way street affair. An altar never more again. The people and the leaders walk hand in hand. They were on the right road all the time. But now there is no time. That is why they have to turn and walk the opposite altar way. They must go to the place of space for the celebration of the dual change. Words of wisdom from Sun Ra and poetry from Sun Ra. Thank you, Sun Ra, for coming up and talking to us tonight. Thank you, Spencer Weston. Also, we didn't get a chance to talk to you much, Spencer. But That's quite all right. <laughs> just, quite to re- all right. just to remind people, Sun Ra and the Orchestra, appearing this Friday, June 1st, at the Afro-American Historical and Cultural Museum. Two shows, 8 and 10 p.m. The museum is at 7th and Arch Streets here in Philadelphia. And for more information, 574-0380. Well, I, I really might uh, would like some people to... Uh to sign up for their passports for outer space. Sounds good to me. I'll be uh, aboard Friday night, that's for sure. Yeah.